Quicken initially opens in the Setup tab, more specifically in the Overview subsection of the Setup tab. In a little while, we'll see how the program can be set to open into any of the tabs that are displayed across the top of the screen. But for now, since we're using Quicken for the first time, the Setup tab is the best place to start. Underneath the words Introduction to Quicken is the Video Center. The Video Center contains five short videos which cover some of the more common features of the program. Since the purpose of this tutorial, however, is to demonstrate the numerous features that Quicken has to offer, we're going to close the Video Center for now by clicking on the Minimize button. Moving the cursor into the Customize Quicken section and then clicking the mouse button, you'll notice that it becomes illuminated in orange. One of the features of this section gives the user the option to enter their tax status information, such as whether or not they're married or have dependents, if they own a home or a business, or rental property. Quicken uses the tax status information for tax planning purposes. It groups transactions together in ways that are helpful in the preparation of a tax return. The Quicken Preferences section is where the user can create a set of instructions for the program to follow. The first preference is whether or not to use a password when Quicken starts. By default, a password is not initially required, but clicking on the word Change in parentheses opens the Quicken File Password dialog box. Passwords are typically longer than six characters and should include a combination of letters and numbers and they should not contain obvious words such as your name. Another important point is that passwords are case sensitive. Let's create a sample password. We'll enter test2009 all in lower case in the new password field. Notice that none of the letters or numbers are actually visible, only asterisks are shown. So it's very important to write the password down on a sheet of paper or on an index card. Once the password has been entered, we'll press the Tab key on our keyboard and then enter the password again in the Confirm Password field. The next step would be to save the password by clicking the OK button, but since this is a sample password, we'll just click the Cancel button. We're going to skip over the Download Transactions when Quicken Starts preference because we're going to cover how to download transactions when we get to the Banking module. If we place a check mark next to the Show Quicken Toolbar preference, the Quicken Toolbar will appear at the top of the screen. The items found on the toolbar include an icon for the Reports and Graphs Center, which we will cover later on in this tutorial, the icon for Quicken Services, which when clicked on, will bring up a web page that offers Quicken users additional services and add-ons, such as the Quicken Rewards Visa Credit Card, the Quicken Bill Pay Service, and Quicken Picks, which Quicken users can sign up for in order to receive online coupons and free offers, as well as discount shopping and cash back from various retailers. There's also an icon for the Quicken Calendar, which will come more into play when we get to the Bills module, and lastly, the icon for the One Step Update feature, which allows the user to download the latest transactions from their various financial institutions.